Hello, and welcome to my presentation about particles and boxes, wave functions, and Python coding. Wave functions, what are they? A wave function is an expression that contains information about a system. For example, the location and momentum of a particle. Wave functions also must satisfy specific constraints. The first constraint being they must be continuous. The second one being they must have a continuous slope. The third one being they must be single valued. And the fourth one being they must be finite. So all four of these wave functions, as you can see, they do not satisfy these constraints in one way or another and are therefore not viable wave functions. An example of a viable wave function is the sine function. So a sine function will start at zero, it will go up, it will come back down, and it will go back to zero. And it will satisfy all four of these constraints. And this wave function here is what we will be using throughout the video. The next thing we need to do is square the wave function, but why? So the wave function will not tell us the exact position and momentum of the particle at the same time because of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So here is the uncertainty principle, and for large objects in the macro scale, you can ignore it. However, for small molecules, when you're dealing with uncertainties that are picometers, nanometers, it is quite important. So to find a solution to this problem, we, all we have to do is square the wave function, to, and this will give us the probability density and tell us where we're most likely to find our particle. The only thing we have to do before this, though, is normalize our wave function. So we normalize our wave function and we find a factor a, and this factor a will guarantee that the integral when we square our wave function will always be equal to one. So here is our expression down here. So we have the le length of the box and zero as our limits and our wave function squared. And now we're going to substitute in psi into this expression. That will give us this expression here. And when we solve the integral, we end up with this big expression here, with this chunky bit between the limits of L and zero. So expanding this, we are left with an even bigger expression. However, this is quite easy to simplify. In this, in the sine two bit, the Ls will cancel out, leaving us with sine two n pi. And this is always equal to zero because sine two pi is equal to zero when n is one. When n is two, it'll be sine four pi, which equals zero. When n is three, it'll be sine six pi equals zero and so forth. So in dealing with this side, we have zero over two becomes zero. And this is timed by zero. So we're left with sine zero which equals zero. So that simplifies down quite nicely into this little expression here, a squared times l over two equals one. And we solve for a, and here is our normalization constant. The next thing we need to do is use Python to model our probability densities and wave function. So to start off our code, we need to define some principal values. So the quantum number is one, this can be two or three, and we will see those later. We have the length of the box here, and we, then we need to define a set of values x, y. So the mp.lin space means there will be 200 values between zero and l, and l is defined up there. And x is this one, y is this lin space. And then we have our normalization constant, a. And then the next thing we need to do is to define psi, and that is, in relation to the x, y values. So a, b, x, y, that's what they correspond to. And here is the expression, which is just the wave function you see down in the bottom corner written out in Python, but it is squared here. And the, the def function will use the values from x, y, and it will save psi 3d for later. The next thing we need to do is to define values for the x and y axes based off of the x, y values defined earlier. Don't get confused between the big x, y's and the small x, y's. Big x, y is new, and these are already defined. The mp.meshgrid function creates a matrix for the x, y values based off of the small x, y values, as I've mentioned, are already defined. The next thing we need to deal with is our psi values. So to deal with our psi values, we need to do a few different functions, and the first one is mp.ravel mp.ravel creates a flattened array, and this is basically just a massive long list of all the values. The next function is the zip function. So the zip function makes sure similar values are grouped together in the list, and it will omit any repeated values. 
And then the final thing we need to do is mp.array, which simply saves this massive long list as an array. The only problem we now have is we now have 40,000 values of psi, but we only have 200 values of x. So this clearly isn't going to work as this is a lot of values and this is not a lot of values. So we have to do the psi.reshape function and psi.reshape simply reshapes it into the x shape. So our 40,000 values will be condensed down to 200 values without losing any integral data, which is quite handy. The final bit of the code is much more simple as it is simply plotting the graph. So here we tell the computer what size we want our graph to be. So 111 and we want it to be 3D. Then we tell the computer what we want to plot. So X, Y and Psi and what we want the color of the surface graph to be. There's lots of different options for this. And the rest of the code is simply setting our labels and titles, the title's color, and saving it as a PNG file. The only th thing to note here is that we can save it as a transparent graph. So as you can see down here, they're both transparent. And here we have our wave function graph. And here is the probability density, which is simply the wave function squared. As mentioned earlier, we can have different values for n. So here we can see values for n equals 2 and n equals 3. So here is our probability densities and here are the wave functions. The wave function, if you imagine this downward lobe has been popped out, it corresponds to the probability density because the probability of it being at the tip of each lobe is the same. So thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your evening.